Happy Softball Sunday, everyone. Outside in January, huzzah. <laughs> I just came up with that move, what do you think? Anyways, Softball Sunday, it's the day we do easy songs, and if you're kind of new, then one of the milestones you may be reaching for is to play a song, any song, all the way through. And to that end, today I'm going to show you four popular 90s songs that you can play with only these four chords. Chord number one is C, we want B1. D2, A3, strum five. My 10th grade chemistry teacher always said, go from what you know. And if you know C, then A minor is really easy to get to. All you have to do is take your ring finger and sneak it back to the G string. Second fret, everything else remains the same. Strum five. Third up is G, and I'm gonna show you three ways to play G. Some might say it's the three G spree. Lee, someone out there is named Lee. Middle finger on E, three. Pointer finger on A2, and for this first way, we're gonna call it three finger G. E3, little E3. Strum everything. You might play four finger G, which involves B3 and E3. Or you may play Tom Petty G, which is done like this. E3 with your ring finger, A2 with your middle finger, and your pinky finger gets little E3. There's some advantages to this. We will talk about it when we get there. G, Lee. And lastly, it's F. I'm gonna give you three options for F as well because you might not wanna play big, huge F, which is starting on the E string. One, three, three, two. You might wanna play baby F, as I call it. It's gonna be one, one on E, B, and then G, two, D, three. You're only gonna strum four if you play F this way. But if that little bar is even a little too much for you right now, that's okay. We're gonna leave the E string open. This is called F major seven, and in the key of all these songs that we're gonna be in, which is C, this chord is interchangeable with regular F. And it's really nice. So play it like that way if you want. Tom Petty accomplished more with these three frets than anyone in the history of the universe, and no four chord song set list is complete without mention of learning to fly, of course, which is gonna be F to C, that's a nice change, A minor, also a nice change, and G, so F, C, A minor, G, all day. Here's a couple more options for the F and the G in this song. Check this out, grab B1, G2, just like normal, use your pinky finger for D3, and then we can add that A string third fret as well. I lied to you, this is yet a fourth way to play F, and switching to C is quite a breeze here. All you have to do is get rid of your pinky finger and move your middle finger up. So now it is. Now, I call it Tom Petty G because I first learned about this kind of G in a Tom Petty song. Other people play it as well, but like we said, pinky finger there, ring finger there, and middle finger there. The benefit here, and this is bonus, you can, you can now play a G suspended four, which means put your pointer finger on the B string first fret, and now we have all this. And please to notice how chords number two, the C, and number four, the G, jump in a half beat early, meaning you're gonna switch on the up strum. So strumming pattern's gonna be down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down. Learning to fly, one down. Same exact four chords in a different order is saved tonight by Eagle Eye Cherry, and our strumming pattern is going to be down, 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 A minor, F, C, G. Down, 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 up, all day. Blink-182, All the Small Things, is of course a power chord song, but those power chords imply regular, open, major, and minor chords, and we can play those. It's like the campfire version. Grab a C chord for four beats. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to amend this C chord a little bit. Pinky finger goes on to D3. Don't lift up your middle finger, because it's not gonna stay for very long. Just two beats. One, two. Back to regular C for two beats. One, two and then four and a half beats of G. Count it like this. One, two, three, four, one. And make that second one very short. Then you say two, three without playing. And then you play F, F, F. 
So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, F, F, F. At which point you repeat. This is the intro. C, two, three, four, sus, normal. G, two, three, four, one, two, three, F, 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 C. Two, three, F, F, F. Then we go into the verse, which is C. All the G, small things, F, G. C, G, F, G, over and over again. At Say It Ain't So, I Will Not Go, you just play C. Na na, C. G, F, that's it, C. For this one, I kind of want to keep it busy, so I'm just kind of going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, except for when you say two, three, and don't play. And the last thing you got to know about all the small things is the bridge, which is the part where it's like. C, C, F, G. Just letting it ring out here. Yeah. All the small things. Three down. And what video of mine would be complete without mention of beloved Pearl Jam? Of course, I'm talking about Wishlist off of Yield, that, my favorite album of all time, uh, C. And what we're going to do is, by the way, when we put our pinky finger down, that's called C suspended 4. On the other hand, if we take our middle finger off, that's called C suspended 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to strum twice on regular C and really just focus on the low strings, the A, D, and maybe G strings here. Strum twice, then take your middle finger off, C sus 2, back on, back off, back on, back off, back on, back off. So we'll call at one set of on, off, one unit, one thing. So we got one, two, three, four, then eight strums on C suspended four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, units. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. That's the verse. The chorus is F, C a whole bunch of times, and then G, F. Do, 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 do. F, C. F, C. Here comes the G. F. Just let it ring out. For this part, I'm going like down, down, up, up, down, up. G. F. And did you notice the strumming secret of the universe? You can't switch chords in no time at all. So you get to employ what I call a junk strum. Meaning if I'm on F and I go down, down, up, up, down, my last up is just kind of, it's just that. That's a part of music. And when you get it flowing, nobody notices and it sounds right. So here we go, normal speed. exaggerating a little bit, but you should practice doing that, because otherwise you're trying to do this, and that doesn't work. That, that doesn't work, so don't do that. <laughs> and lastly, the solo section to wish list. One of the things I really love about Pearl Jam is they're one of the few rock bands who take the time to, more often than not, do a different chord progression, something that hasn't appeared in the song yet already for the solo. And the solo here, it doesn't mean it's complicated, it's just the same three chords in a different order. The solo here is G, F, C. Whole bunch of times. And the last time, let's do the whole thing. Here we go. G to F. Back to the verse. 
So there you have it, four 90s songs using only C, A minor, F, and G. It's getting really cold, so thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful, and I'll see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye. Listen, as guitar players, we are always searching for that special tone that we hold in our mind's earballs. And I'm very excited to share with you the Guitar Pedals 101 course from Wampler Pedals. And it's probably not what you think. Rather than being about multitudinous arrays of pedals, it walks you through the various points in the signal chain from guitar to pickups to amp to cabinets that influence how pedals respond. And Brian Wampler illustrates his points and makes lots and lots of different tones with only two pedals. I took this course, I found it highly informative, so if you are on a lifelong mission for your tone, I encourage you to do the same, and it's only 20 bucks, so the first time you don't spend $200 on a pedal you don't even need, and find the answer in some stuff you already have, or maybe get you know sent off in a different, more helpful direction, you'll be totally glad you did. And the best part is you do not have to be an expert in these matters to gain from this Guitar Pedal 101 course from Wampler. It's for noobs, but there's also stuff for more experienced folks in there too. I owned zero pedals five years ago, true story, and now Miss Poopadoop and I are obsessed. I wish I'd have found this course four and three quarters years ago. It would have saved me a lot of brain power and energy. So check out the link in the description.